The story of Nelson Mandela being jailed for 27 years is well known, first on Robben Island, then at Polsmoor. Late one evening, he was taken, alone, out into the night, to a waiting car, and driven beyond the lights of the city. Not many people know this part of the story. For more than two and a half decades, no one had seen his face. No one would recognize him if he called for help. A man you cannot even mention. You couldn't sing about him, you couldn't talk about him, and we always wanted to see him. Driving to a remote farm in Paul, rolling to a stop at the end of a gravel road, and the lights turning off. Is this how the dream would end? No prison, no keys, just a quiet stillness under the stars. And a home, a neat suburban home. How strange it must have felt to see the warm light filtering through the curtains and the peace of the night. Far away from the harsh glare of Polsmoor. A comfortable bed to rest and sleep deeply on his first night away from prison. Madiba was to stay in this quiet home for the last months of his prison term. Situated in the heart of the Drakenstein Valley, it is surrounded by magnificent scenery and a variety of attractions. Madiba loved an occasional small glass of sweet wine, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. As he walked into the lounge that morning, in the center was a fireplace, but he was forbidden to light it. Being a lawyer, he realized that legally, they couldn't deny a doctor's request and received a prescription for firewood to warm the home and himself. They asked me, were you ever in the island? He said, yes, I was there from 1965 to 71. And uh, what do you do there? I said, no, I was, I was a driver of the truck. Take you to the Langwari. And then his face go like that. They said, you the driver? I said, yes. He said, I hope you're a better cook than a driver. The world had moved on in his time in prison. Why would there be two TVs in the lounge? until Jack gently explained that the second TV was in fact a microwave. They hadn't existed a quarter century ago. The master bedroom, so much space, softer, quieter, compared to where he'd been for so long. Folks, look at the size of this room. They brought Madiba here after 25 and a half years in a tiny little cell in suddenly this spacious room. Now this was overwhelming to him. So after a few nights he said, please give me something smaller and I want to show you where they took him. So this was the room which they gave him. We call it today Winnie's room. They offered this room to Mama Winnie, but she never spent the night here. She always went back to Paul and returned the following day. And although this room had his own hidden bathroom, he felt he needed something a bit smaller. So Madiba finally settled on this room. This became his favorite room. He spent many nights here. There was a little bed in here. And the reason why I love this room so much, because this reminded him the most of Robben Island, because this is slightly larger than his actual cell on Robben Island. And here, 
he made many notes which those notes are still today on display and, and form part of the transition which took place in South Africa. He felt safe here, in a smaller place, the limited space that was his life for so many years. And he was safe in this home, out in the Pal countryside, with one-way glass on every window and a guard outside at all times. With better living conditions and a clinic in the spare room, his health improved. He could move about freely, in this house at least. But he was under no illusion that this was a gilded cage. He was still a prisoner, isolated. Alone on the grounds of Victor Fester Prison, he missed discussions with his friends from Robben Island that had been through so much together. But here, in this home, there was work to be done to continue their plan for a free and democratic South Africa that they'd all been striving for for so long. This dining room table is where he sat for hours on end through the night, drafting the key points of what would become South Africa's new constitution. And he left notes for Jack about his friend, the field mouse, that kept coming back. And made international phone calls to supporters from around the world. Sunrise and an early morning cycle on his exercise bike to get ready for the new day. With the daylight streaming in, the doors opened up onto the pool. He loved the water but he never swam. Even with the offer of lessons and a gift of a boogie board. He would meet outside in the garden or inside the lounge with his reception committee and friends. The seemingly normal life was anything but. Every room in the house was bugged with listening devices. They are still finding them. No one knows how many. Look on the outside of the house, where the office was. There was the security police, intelligence, and our guys. So they was listening in when, the, when there's visitors, they was listening in. International pressure, sanctions, and unrest among South Africans was driving change. F.W. de Klerk announced the unbanning of the ANC and that he would be released. The home was a buzz of activity, with visits from friends and comrades planning and speech writing, getting ready to be seen in public after 27 years. Racing out the door, he forgot his reading glasses and the historic speech on the bed. As young people, we always wanted to see how this man looked like. Uh, we decided that uh, Matiba should be seen walking out of the prison gate. That is why when we got to the prison gate, we had to stop there, get him out of the car, and he walked to the crowd that was waiting outside the prison gates. As we were planning, we were saying, at least because there are people here who couldn't go to the parade, it would be prudent for Matiba to just greet them then back in the car and off to Cape Town to deliver his first speech as a free man on the Grand Parade. You'll see him having to use Winnie's glasses. His were still on the bed, back in Palm. Madiba's first experience of freedom was along this Palm Road in the Drakenstein Valley. We invite you to visit us here to take a tour of his home and retrace his footsteps as he left prison and changed the course of South African history forever.